The AP News article, Russia Grinds Deeper into Ukraine After 1,000 Days of Grueling War, examines the current state of the Russia-Ukraine war, highlighting the ongoing conflict's devastating toll and the strategic challenges faced by both sides. The article emphasizes the slow but steady territorial gains Russia has made in eastern Ukraine, while acknowledging Ukraine's resilience and its dependence on Western military support. It also analyzes the potential impact of a Trump presidency on the war, noting his previous statements about ending the conflict and the potential for a ceasefire. In an article dated November 17, 2024, the headline reads, Biden authorizes Ukraine to use U.S.-supplied long-range missiles for deeper strikes inside Russia. This move is likely to be seen as highly aggressive by the Russians, and conceivably even an act of war. Risking an ever-heightened set of tensions with a nuclear power, Biden's reasoning hasn't been made clear. Some fear he's trying to create a situation that has escalated into further chaos, so as to hamper the next administration's stated goal of ending that conflict. The article says, President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to use U.S.-supplied long-range missiles to strike deeper inside Russia, easing limitations on the weapons, as Russia deploys thousands of North Korean troops to reinforce its war, according to a U.S. official and three other people familiar with the matter. The decision allowing Kiev to use the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMs, for attacks farther inside Russia comes as President Vladimir Putin positions North Korean troops along Ukraine's northern border to try to reclaim hundreds of miles of territory seized by Ukrainian forces. Let's jump into a discussion. I think it's already underway. Are we in the U.S. about to start a nuclear war? I mean, oh, wow. President Biden just authorized Ukraine to use U.S.-supplied long-range missiles to strike inside Russia. Yeah. This is insane. It is a, certainly a dramatic escalation. Right. Um, almost a thousand days into this war now, with Russia making gains and a new U.S. president about to take office. Right. This decision has sent shockwaves around the world. I mean, why would we do this? It's so dangerous. Are they trying to sabotage the next administration? Well, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Um, let's start with the authorization itself. Biden's decision removes previous limitations on the range of U.S. weapons Ukraine could use. Okay. Specifically, they can now use Army Tactical Missile Systems, or ATICMS. Okay, so what exactly are ATICMS? These are missiles with a range of about 300 kilometers. Wow. More than double what Ukraine has had access to before. They could now hit targets deep inside Russia. Oh, wow. Potentially disrupting supply lines, command centers, even air bases. That sounds like a game changer. It could be. But also incredibly risky. Couldn't this push Putin over the edge? It's a valid concern. Remember, Putin has previously warned that the U.S. providing long-range missiles would be considered an act of war. Right. And he's hinted at using nuclear weapons in response to attacks on Russian territory. This is giving me serious chills. Yeah. But why now? Why make such a drastic move with just weeks left in office? Well, there are a couple of key factors at play. One is North Korea's increasing involvement in the war. They've reportedly sent thousands of troops and a significant amount of munitions to support Russia. I'd heard about that, but isn't North Korea's military technology pretty outdated? Yeah. How much of a difference can they really make? That's a common misconception. While their conventional forces might not be on par with the U.S. or Russia, their artillery and rocket systems are still formidable. And more importantly, this alliance has symbolic weight. It shows Russia isn't isolated. So this alliance is a threat on multiple levels. But how does that explain Biden's decision to give Ukraine these long-range missiles? It adds another layer of urgency to the situation. Some analysts believe Biden is trying to strengthen Ukraine's position on the battlefield before Trump, who has promised to end the war, quickly takes office. It's like he's trying to tie Trump's hands, preventing him from negotiating a peace deal. But couldn't that backfire? Oh, it absolutely could. What if Trump sees this as an unnecessary provocation and cuts off aid to Ukraine entirely? That's definitely a possibility. Trump's foreign policy has been unpredictable, to say the least, and there's no guarantee he'll follow the path set by the previous administration. So we're stuck in this incredibly precarious situation with no clear answers. What happens next? Well, to understand that we need to take a closer look at the potential consequences of this decision, both on the battlefield and in the global political landscape. All right, let's let's uh, let's get into that. Okay. So let's consider what these long-range missiles could actually mean for the fighting in Ukraine. Yeah. So on the one hand, you've got Ukraine and its supporters arguing that this is absolutely crucial to their defense. Exactly. They say being able to hit targets deeper inside Russia disrupts supply lines, uh -huh. forces Russia to redeploy troops and resources, yeah. and ultimately slows or even halts their advance. I can see their point. <laughs> 
mean, even if they're not taking out like major military installations yeah. to d disrupting the flow of fuel ammunition food. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That could have a significant impact on the Russian war effort. It could indeed. And there's also the psychological effect. Imagine being a Russian soldier on the front lines, knowing that your supply depot, hundreds of kilometers away, could be targeted at any moment. Right. That adds a whole new level of uncertainty and fear. Yeah, it's like taking away that sense of security, that feeling that there's a safe haven behind the front lines. Precisely. But, as we've discussed, there's also the risk that this move could backfire spectacularly. By provoking Putin and escalating the conflict to a whole new level? Exactly. There's a real concern that Putin could see this as a direct attack on Russian soil and retaliate in a way that draws NATO into the conflict. And that's a terrifying thought. We're talking about a potential world war here. The stakes are incredibly high. And it's not just about military action. Russia could retaliate in other ways, you know, through cyber attacks, disinformation campaigns, or even by targeting critical infrastructure in the West. So the potential fallout from this decision extends far beyond the battlefield in Ukraine. Absolutely. This situation is about more than just one country or one conflict. It's about the shifting balance of global power, the rise of new alliances, and the potential for these dynamics to lead to devastating consequences. It's almost like we're watching a slow motion train wreck and no one seems to know how to stop it. It's certainly a precarious moment in history. And while the focus is understandably on the immediate military and political ramifications, it's crucial not to lose sight of the human cost of this war. Of course. Amidst all this talk of missiles and strategy, we can't forget that there are real people on the ground who are suffering. Tens of thousands of soldiers on both sides have already died. Over 11,700 Ukrainian civilians have been killed. Families have been torn apart homes destroyed, an entire community shattered. And Ukraine is facing a growing challenge in replacing their lost troops. Every day this war continues. The death toll rises. It's heartbreaking. It is, and it's a reminder that these decisions made in the halls of power have real-world consequences for real people. So what does this all mean? What are the possible outcomes of this situation? Well, it's hard to say for sure, but we can explore some potential scenarios. Okay, so let's talk about those potential scenarios. On one end of the spectrum, you have the optimistic view that these long-range missiles will be a decisive factor enabling Ukraine to push back Russian forces and force Putin to the negotiating table. Right. The idea here is that by demonstrating their ability to strike deep inside Russia, uh -huh. Ukraine can deter further aggression and gain leverage in any future peace talks. Oh, okay. It's a gamble, but one that some argue is necessary to achieve a lasting peace. But then you have the opposite view. The nightmare scenario where this just provokes Putin. Right. Leading to a dangerous escalation of the conflict. Exactly. This could involve Russia targeting NATO supply lines, launching large-scale cyber attacks against Western infrastructure, or even, as we've discussed, using tactical nuclear weapons. And either of those scenarios could quickly spiral out of control, dragging the whole world into a conflict no one wants. It's a chilling thought. And then there's the middle ground where the impact of these missiles is more limited. Maybe they disrupt Russian operations to some extent, Yeah. but don't fundamentally alter the course of the war. So kind of a stalemate situation where the fighting continues, but neither side is able to gain a decisive advantage. Right. And that raises the question of what happens next. Does the conflict drag on for years, becoming a frozen war that drains resources and perpetuates instability in the region? Or does it eventually lead to some kind of negotiated settlement, but one that leaves Ukraine deeply scarred and vulnerable to future aggression? It all feels so uncertain. And with Trump about to take office, there's this added layer of unpredictability. We just don't know how he'll respond to this situation. That's the wild card here. Will he see this as a strategic blunder by the previous administration and pull back U.S. support for Ukraine? Or will he double down, taking an even more aggressive stance towards Russia? Yeah, his past statements on the conflict have exactly been consistent. Right. So it's anyone's guess at this point. And that uncertainty makes it even more crucial for everyone to stay informed and engaged. This isn't just a distant conflict happening in another part of the world. It has the potential to impact all of us. So where do we go from here? What can the listeners do to make sense of this incredibly complex situation? Well, the first step is to be critical of the information you're consuming. Don't just accept headlines or social media posts at face value. Dig deeper, look for multiple perspectives, and be wary of overly simplistic narratives. And remember, even amidst all the geopolitical maneuvering and military strategy, there are real human lives at stake. Let's not forget the people caught in the crossfire, the families torn apart, the futures 
shattered by this war. Their stories deserve to be heard, and their suffering should remind us of the true cost of conflict. Well said. This has been a sobering conversation. It has. But I think a necessary one. The situation in Ukraine is evolving rapidly, and we'll continue to follow it closely. In the meantime, we encourage our listeners to stay informed, stay engaged, and stay hopeful that a peaceful resolution can still be found. Thank you for having me. And thank you all for joining us today.